Hello, my name is Charlie Norris. I am the Automation Product Manager here at Wago, and with me is Mark T. Kramer, our Product Support Manager. In this short video, we would like to introduce the Touch Panel 600 web panel. We will cover the use of the web panel and show you how to configure the device as well how to develop HTML5 web pages. The web panel functions like a common operator touchscreen interface. The user can monitor and control their applications from a display. However, it is an industrial web browser. Now, I know you might be thinking that the user will view the screens and see the URL bar at the top or maybe their favorite bookmark links at the top of the screen. However, this is not what you will see. From the operator standpoint, the screens will look like a traditional HMI like shown in this example. The operator won't know if the display pages are loaded on the device or if they are viewing a web page. This device will display HTML5 web visualizations. One very nice feature of the web panel is that there's no programming done on this device. There is some configuration that needs to be set up in its web-based management, but that's all. The graphics screens are developed using Wago's eCockpit engineering tool. The advantage is that one software tool is used to develop your PLC logic as well as your graphical interface. All the program tags and visualization tags are in one device. In fact, they are the same tags, so there's no need for duplications. The eCockpit application is downloaded to your Wago PFC 100 or 200, and the web panel is configured to view the pages from the PFC's onboard web server. In this way, the PFC controller is the only device that needs to be programmed. You may ask, when is it best to use a web panel for your application? This device is ideal for basic control applications where you're using a PFC 100 or PFC 200 for a standalone control application like you might find in a skidded system. The web panel can be used by the operator to monitor the equipment as well as use the touch screen to interface with the system such as starting or stopping operations or inputting data like set points. The advantage of this architecture is that the PLC and PLC logic and HTML5 pages are contained in the PFC controller. This makes configuration simple. The logic and graphic pages are in one application, making it easy to develop and maintain. There is no need to import or export tags between the PLC program ac application and the HMI engineering application. Everything is one program. So if you need to make changes in the future, there is only one application to modify. There are some considerations, considerations um, with this type of arrangement. First, I would note that the web panel can be used to connect to multiple PFC controllers. There is a drop-down menu that the operator can use to select what PLC or what machine they want to view. However, web screens can only be displayed from one controller at a time. Uh, the other thing to think about is that the PLC processor load must be considered. The processor needs to manage and execute the PLC logic as well as the web server. So, with more complex applications and systems with a large number of display pages, engineers will have to be mindful of the amount of demands placed on the processor. This is the view of the web panel's interface ports. It is what we call the PIO1 configuration. There is a 24 volt DC port to power device. Uh, it also has two configurable Ethernet ports. That is, you can configure the ports to act like a switch, or you can set them up as independent ports with separate IP addresses. I would also like to mention that the web panels come with an onboard firewall. So if you are concerned with network security, you can enable the firewall for enhanced cybersecurity. And the device has two USB ports that can be used with an external keyboard or mouse. In a minute, Mark will show you a demo of how easy it is to use the web panel for the PFC controller. This diagram is the architecture of the demo. Mark is going to show you how to use eCockpit to develop the PLC code as well as the HTML5 uh, web visualizations that will be downloaded to the PFC controller. Then in run mode, the PFC's web server will host the graphics that are viewed by the web panel. I think you will find that the process is very straightforward and you will see that the operator panel looks like a traditional HMI that you'll find on any factory floor. Here's one of the web panels that Charlie talked about. This is the 10.1 inch standard line TP600, which has the resistive touchscreen. 
I'm showing it here with a PFC200, which is acting as a web server. The PFC200 is running a small e-cockpit project that keeps track of how often I toggle this switch, which is wired to an input module, and the information is displayed in this web page. I'll show you what this looks like in eCockpit. So here's the visualization that you just saw on the TP600 web panel. To give you an idea of how this works, I'll add a button to this visualization and we'll use it to turn on an output. First, I'm going to go to the device structure and I'm going to assign a variable name to a digital output. In my I.O. node, I have an output module. And I'll give a name to the first digital output. I'll call it my output. Then in my program, and this is all it is so far, I'll add a line of code that says my output colon equals my button. My button is not declared yet. So we'll click on declare variable and we'll make my button a boolean variable and just say OK. I'll set up my button so the variable will toggle each time I press it, turning my output on and off. In fact, let me just put in a comment that says that uh, button will toggle output on slash off. Now I'll go back to my visualization and add the button. I have a few choices for buttons here. I'm going to choose the push switch. I'll just drag and drop one over to an open space. Right about there looks good. And I'll make it a little bigger right away. Now I'll go to the button properties. And where it says variable, I'm going to put in the name my button. If you prefer, you can pick it from a list like this. PLC PRG my button. And say OK. OK, that should work. Let me put a background behind this so it's a little easier to see. I'll just copy and paste this one and send it to the back. OK, now since I changed my project, I need to download it to the controller. So we'll connect and do an online change because it's a little faster. And put the controller in run. Done. All right, let's go back to the TP600 and make sure this works. Here we are. We have the new project downloaded, so my web page now shows this button. And when I press it, hopefully you can see that this output turns on. And when I press it again, it turns off. And that's my TP600 web panel demo. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions on the Touch Panel 600 web panel, please contact your local Wavo representative or give us a call. Additional information such as product data sheets and manuals can be found on our website at wago.us. Thank you for watching.